Welcome viewers, today is a great day because today I have my very first AMD Athlon Mini PC from Minus Forum. This is the Minus Forum UM200 Windows 10 Mini PC. This model runs on the AMD Athlon Dual Core 300U CPU on 8GB of DDR4 RAM and 128GB of M.2 PCIe SSD storage. In my last mini PC video, I featured an AMD Ryzen 5 mini PC that had lots of power. And now we have an AMD Arthelon model, which is a step down CPU, sort of the equivalent to the Intel Celeron models. So in this video, we'll see for the first time how an AMD Arthelon mini PC performs as a desktop computer. And we'll also see how compatible it is with Android x86. So don't go anywhere, you have that right after this. Welcome back. The AMD Athlon 300U is a dual core CPU with 4 threads with a base clock speed of 2.4 GHz and a boost speed up to 3.3 GHz. Its GPU is the Radeon Vega 3 graphics processor running at 1000 MHz. It has 8 GB of DDR4 dual channel RAM and it has 2 available memory slots that can be upgraded to 32 GB. The operating system runs on a 128GB M.2 2280 SATA SSD that can be upgraded to 2TB, plus you have SATA expandable storage up to 2TB. It has dual band Wi-Fi 6 AX200 support with Bluetooth 5.1 support, and the operating system is Windows 10 Pro. In the box, you have the mini PC itself. You get one HDMI cable, one display port cable, a 19 volt 3 amps DC power adapter, a mountain bracket and screws, a warranty card and a user's guide. And now it's design and ports. The body is made of plastic with the Minus Forum logo printed to the top along with two press button clips to remove the top cover. To the rear, you have two HDMI 2.0 ports, one display port, dual RJ45 Ethernet LAN ports, two USB 3.1 generation 2 ports, the DC power input and the exhaust vent. At the front, you have one USB 3.1 generation 2 port, one yellow USB 3.1 generation 1 port, one type C port, a headphone jack, a reset button, a built-in microphone and an LED power button. To both sides of the PC, you have intake vents. And below the PC, you have four rubber feet, screw holes for attaching the mountain bracket and the main intake vent for the internal cooling fan. When you remove the top cover, you have access to the memory slots, the M.2 SATA SSD and the expandable SATA storage connection. I'll now set this up on my 4K TV that I'll be using as a monitor for this review and continue. So I've successfully connected the PC and when you start up for the first time, you will have to complete the Windows 10 startup wizard which includes entering your Microsoft account, connecting to your network and setting up Cortana Assistant. Once completed, you are then taken to the Windows desktop. Under basic system information, it shows that the operating system is Windows 10 Pro. Its CPU is running at 2.4 GHz, which is its base clock speed, on 8 GB of RAM on a 64-bit operating system. Below here, it shows that Windows is activated. For more advanced system and hardware information, let's look at the summary of the Ada64 Extreme app. It shows the same CPU information, but this time it shows the boost clock speed of 3.3 GHz. The motherboard is the AMD K17.1. The RAM type is an 8GB Kingston DDR4 2400SD RAM chip running at 1200 MHz. The GPU is a 256MB Pentacore AMD Radeon Vega 3 graphics processor. It has three AMD K17.1 audio adapters including an ATI Radeon HDMI audio adapter and the Realtek ALC269 audio processor. Under storage, it shows that the M.2 SSD is a Kingston PCIe Generation 3 NVMe 1.3 module. 
It shows that it has dual band Wi-Fi support and surprisingly, the Wi-Fi 6 network adapter is an AX200 by Intel. It also shows that it has Bluetooth network adapter. So that's basically its system and hardware information. Let's now take a look at its benchmarks. First, it's RAM copy and system storage read and write speeds. It has a RAM copy speed of 14,214 megabytes per second. Its system storage has a read speed of 1,492 megabytes per second and a write speed of 2,242. These are some good scores. I believe it's better than most Intel Celeron models. Next is the PCMark 10 benchmark score. This benchmark is a stress test performed on all critical systems of the PC. In this test, it got a score of 3,491. At the end of this benchmark segment, I will use this benchmark as reference to place it on my rankings chart. Next, I have the results of the dual Wi-Fi bands and the dual Ethernet LAN speed test. After all tests were completed, the results show that it has excellent Wi-Fi reception on both Wi-Fi bands and on the LAN ports, achieving 100% of my bandwidth. It also means that the dual LAN ports are Gigabit LAN ports. Next is the benchmark results from the Geekbench 5 CPU benchmark. In this CPU benchmark, it got a score of 810 single core and 1798 multi core. These scores reflect well on the CPU performance in this mini PC. My final benchmark is from the 3 Mark Gamers Bench GPU benchmark. In this benchmark, it scored 38,340 in the iStorm Extreme test. 6,214 in the CloudGate test and 348 in the TimeSpy test. So that's it for the benchmarks. Let's now see where it places on the chart. So the scores are in and on this chart, I don't have many mini PCs to date, but from what I've got so far, the Minus Forum UM200 is at position number two, just below the B-Link Ryzen 5 model. It also shows that it outperforms the Intel Celeron models. You can view this chart on my website in full spreadsheet format where you can view the top mini PCs for 2020. Well, at least from what I've reviewed thus far. See the link in the description below this video. As a mini desktop computer, there are many things you can do on it connected to your TV for entertainment, as well as you can connect it to a monitor or up to three monitors and use it for gaming or for work related activities. Here I've installed Microsoft Office and using the HDMI port, the Display port and the Type-C port, I've connected three portable monitors in extended mode to use it to edit multiple documents. For those who have monitors that only has HDMI connections, here I have two 4K HDR adapters that allow you to convert the Display port and the Type-C port to HDMI display. Links to these adapters along with the portable monitors used in this demonstration can be found in the description below this video. For entertainment, you can install Netflix and Amazon Prime Video from the Microsoft Store and enjoy movies in HD and 4K quality. When it comes to 4K HDR video playback, the UM200 has HDR display, but it's a manual switch and it doesn't activate automatically like in Android TV boxes. And after testing all the available display ports, it only has HDR display on the HDMI port. And to be totally transparent, I encountered a problem while playing my list of 4K HDR videos. Unlike in my previous B-Link Ryzen 5 mini PC video, where the default Windows Movie and TV Player played all of the 4K videos without issues, that's not the case with this model. What happens is that the Movie and TV Player plays the videos, but there is lots of freezing and jittering. So that led me to use the Windows version of the VLC Player. That too had some issues where on every attempt to play a video, the app crashes and closes. After further testing, I discovered that the Microsoft version of the VLC player, the one found on the Microsoft Store, plays my videos without issues. However, when the movies are playing within a reduced window, it plays perfectly. But when you set it to full screen, it starts to jitter. 
These challenges only apply to 4K videos that has HDR format. Videos without HDR formatting plays just fine on all players, and HDR 1080p videos also play without issues. And only a win for Barca would be enough because it would give them the same number of points as Atletico. But the head-to-head -head goal difference is what counts in the case. So please take note of this issue, but I still give this PC some credit because none of the intern models I've tested in the past were able to play any of these videos. Next, the UM200 has digital audio surround sound output of all types including Dolby True HD. Here I have it connected to my receiver in HDMI pass-through configuration and I'm using the default Windows Movie and TV Media Player as the Microsoft Store version of the VLC player does not output digital audio and I'll now do a quick demonstration. This is Dolby Atmos, the world's first object-based cinematic audio with powerful moving audio that transcends from channels to moving around you with pinpoint accuracy. Executioners, 
judges. Welcome to the inside of your head. So this shows that this mini PC has Dolby Atmos, DTS-X, DTS HD Master Audio, THX and Dolby True HD surround sound output. And for my final demonstration on the Windows, I will connect my gamepad via Bluetooth and play a Windows game called Destiny 2 and let's see how well its graphics rendering and game handling performs. So the game played in low 720p resolution on medium graphic settings. And a word of advice, I had to enable HDR display that totally transformed the quality of the gameplay, so be mindful of that. The graphics rendering isn't the best, but at the right settings, the game is indeed playable. So this ends the Windows segment of this video and this is just its core function as a Windows desktop computer, but it can do so much more. Next I'll install a 500GB SATA SSD into the SATA expansion compartment and install a separate standalone operating system called Android x86 and utilize 100% of the PC's hardware to run it. This is one of the exciting things you can do with a mini PC with expandable storage where you can transform it into a full-fledged Android TV box. It requires a bit of work to get it up and running and there is no guarantee that it's going to be 100% compatible with Windows hardware, so it's all experimentation. If you would like to learn how to install Android x86 as a standalone operating system on expandable storage, see the link to my tutorial in the description below this video. 
So I'll pause for a moment to install Android x86 and let's see how it performs and how compatible it is on an AMD Athlon chipset. So I'm back, but it appears that I spoke too soon. I was unable to get any of the latest versions of Android x86 to run on this PC because there just aren't any drivers for the AMD Radeon Vega 3 GPU at this time. What happens is that the operating system installs normally, then when it tries to boot, the picture just scrambles and you can't see anything on the screen. However, there's one operating system which is Phoenix OS that installs and you get a display, but the display quality is very low and most of the apps and games I try to install fail to run because they don't recognize the GPU. So this means until there's further development on AMD hardware from the Android x86 project, running Android on this mini PC is not going to happen. So in summary, the Minisferum UM200 is an excellent Windows 10 mini PC to buy. It's powerful. It has great benchmarks. It has 4K HDR display. It has the best dual band Wi-Fi and LAN speed connection. Bluetooth 5.1 works great. It can output all of the digital surround sound audio formats including Dolby True HD. And it can play some of the big name game titles on low graphic settings. Its build is well thought out with an internal cooling fan, expandable M.2 system storage up to 2TB, additional SATA expandable storage also up to 2TB. It comes with 8GB of LPDDR4 RAM that can be upgraded to 32GB and it has all the ports of a modern portable device including a Type-C port. It's unfortunate that my Android x86 project did not go as planned, but that's no fault of the PC as there's just not enough development on Android x86 for AMD hardware at this time. But rest assured, the community is already working hard on it and we'll be seeing much improvement in the future. So this brings to an end my review of the Minisferum UM200. Give this video the thumbs up if you enjoyed the presentation. Doing so also helps with the support of this channel. And if you would like to get your hands on this mini PC for the season, you can do so by using the link I've provided in the description below this video. Using my links support this channel directly and provides the means for me to acquire new products for review. So thanks for watching. Be sure to subscribe to my channel if you haven't already done so along with clicking the notifications bell as it improves the ratings of this channel and it also sends you a notification when I release new videos or decide to do a giveaway. Stay tuned and I'll be seeing you in the next one.